Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Kaiju VFX. Today we are going to be creating Mogira's eye beams as requested by GNG Fan. Here's what our final product is going to look like. Alright, so for the sake of time to start out this tutorial, I've already uh, got our footage and our background in here. Already keyed out Mogira, color corrected it, and did all that good stuff just so we wouldn't have to waste time with that. If you want to know how to do that, there's plenty of tutorials out there, and I've also covered it for figures and such uh, in the past two tutorials that I've done. So, there you go. So, like I said, we're going to be creating Mogira's eye beam as it appears in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Uh, this effect is going to be relatively simple, and to start off, we're going to make sure that we have all of our layers deselected. Press G to get the mask tool going here. And we're going to draw the shape of one of the eye beams here. So Mogira's eye beam sort of comes out very thinly and then bulges out a tiny bit. And then we'll bring it back there. And we'll play around with this a little bit until we find a uh, shape that we're happy with. Something like that. And uh, as you're doing this, you want to make sure that it's all aligned with the direction that you want the eye beams to be shooting. And uh, this looks good for here. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to select that shape layer. We'll have it start right here, which is where we want the eye beam to start. And we'll also uh, hit the Alt and Bracket key so that we can automatically bring it to one single frame. And we'll make this maybe three frames long for now. We'll probably play with that later. But now for the time being, we're going to go into the Effects and Presets tab and add a Fractal Noise. And as you can see, this completely uh, covers the little eye beam effect in, well, a Fractal Noise. So if we solo this... Uh, and you can see the fractal noise going on there. And so if we take the uh, offset turbulence area, move that around, you can see that we're playing around the fractal noise effect. So for fractal noise, I generally like to set the fractal type to dynamic progressive. Uh, we'll bring up the brightness of that just a tad, bring up the contrast a tiny bit too, maybe about 155. Turn up the complexity to about 8.1 or so. And that's it for that part now. So now we're going to add a plugin to this effect, uh, a free plugin from Video Copilot called Color Vibrance. So we'll type in VC Color Vibrance and then get that on there. And uh, as it starts out, it's green right now, but obviously Mogira's eye beams aren't green. If you see in the movie, they're yellow. So we're going to change the color of this to yellow. Uh, that looks good. And maybe we'll play around with the fractal noise a little bit until we find an area that looks pretty bright most of the way through. In fact, what we can do is go into the transform settings and bring down the scale, and then we'll have quite a bit more variety. Maybe we'll bring the contrast down just a tad and the brightness up a little bit. Looks a little better. All right, so now we'll select that layer once again, and we are going to add a radial fast blur. And we got to move the center to about the center point of this little beam right here. And as you can see, we're sort of getting this little uh, radial blur as it's uh, spewing the blur outward. And it really uh, helps to shed light all over the scene here. Uh, so we'll bring up the amount of that just a tad. Maybe about 75. There we go. Now we'll add a glow effect. And we'll play around with the threshold settings and all that stuff. Maybe bump up the radius quite a bit. That's looking pretty good. So next we want to try and animate this uh, little beam right here. So we could click the stopwatch just on the shape layer uh, to keyframe the position, move forward a little bit, and then move the beam outward. But the problem is, uh, well, as the beam effect moves, the radial fast blur does not. And that's not too big of an issue. Uh, it's a relatively easy fix. Basically what we're going to do is just keyframe the center of the radial fast blur go forward a frame or so, whoops, not move Mogira, but rather move the radial blur to still be in line with the shape layer. Maybe we'll move the shape layer down for this frame. There we go. So now we still have that beam being shut off and the radial fast blur moves with it. All right, so real quick, I'm just gonna repeat that whole process to create the beam coming out of the second eye. There we go. So now we've got Mogira's eye beams firing off in succession, right at the same time. 
Now, this effect is just kind of looking very generic right now. Uh, and there's a couple things that we can do to really enhance this effect and give a lot more personality to it. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the Mogira base layer down here. So we'll duplicate that and we'll just rename these so we know what's what. We'll just name this bottom one Mogira and name the top one Mogira Eyes. And well, you can probably already guess what we're going to do. Let's uh, bring this composition down and we'll solo it for now. We're going to go in here. We'll also delete that curves layer and we'll go ahead and draw a mask around Mogira's eyes. There we go. We'll make sure that's add and we'll also solo the other layer just so we can see what we're doing. And uh, however, as you can see, we're going to make these eyes glow essentially. And as you can see, each of these eyes are a different color just because of the lighting situation. Um, and that means when we apply the glow effect and we get one eye, say this one, the way that we would want it to look, this one is not going to look the same. And that's no bueno really. So to remedy this, we're just going to have to do a little bit of extra work and duplicate this layer. We'll delete that mask and we'll draw a mask on the second layer around the second eye. There we go, so we'll set the feathering of both of these to maybe five. And we'll go with this one first and add a glow effect. Bring up the threshold, bring up the radius a little bit. That looks good. Second layer, add a glow effect again. Play around with all this stuff again, bring up the radius. sort of getting it to look the same. There we go, that's looking all right. Maybe actually we'll go back to this first one and bring up the threshold a little bit. There we go. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're going to keyframe the opacity for both of these. So we'll set keyframes for both of these at the very start of the beam firing at 100 go forward a couple of frames and then bring those both down to zero. So now we have Mogir's eyes lighting up as he shoots off the beams and then slowly going back to normal. So next there's a couple things that actually I want to fix about these little beam effects right here just to make them look a little nicer. Uh, we're going to go into the blending mode for both of these and set that to screen and uh, that just makes them look a little bit brighter and we don't have the sort of dark yellow parts showing off too much. So that's already looking a lot better. Next we're going to add lens flares to these. So we'll create a new black solid, we'll drag the start of it to there, and then we'll press alt brackets bring the end there. And we could use uh, the built-in lens flares in After Effects, and, you know we could get a couple different settings from these. And you're always more than welcome to do that, but I have access to optical flares from Video Copilot, which I like a lot more for lens flares, basically. It gives you a lot more creativity and freedom with cool ones that you can choose. All right, so I've gone ahead and made this lens flare right here, and we'll set the layer to screen. Okay, so we've got that lens flare in place. Uh, before we start doing anything with that though, we're going to make these beams continuous. So we're going to take all those, duplicate them, drag them over a tiny bit. Maybe we'll have them start right there. Yep. So we'll just keep duplicating these a couple of times and I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch it. Okay, so we got the beam going for about a second there or so. And uh, actually, we can make it go even longer, really, from one, two. We'll just select all those, duplicate them again, yada, yada, drag them over. Same thing we've been doing. So now with this lens flare, we're going to drag that all the way to the end of the composition. We'll check the eye on that so we can see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the flicker options, bring the speed up to 77 maybe, and the amount we'll bring up to 64 or so. And so as you can see, that's going to make that lens flare flicker for us as the beams are firing. So it looks like the light is changing and all that. And maybe we'll bring the speed even up more to about 100, maybe the magnitude even more to, to 76. So now we'll see how that looks. 
All right, this is looking all right. So now we're gonna just duplicate that lens flare layer and bring the second one over there. We'll fix the center position on that one. And we'll play around with the rotation settings on this flare since right now, since uh, the streak is not parallel with this one and it's on a different level, it just looks kind of awkward as it like goes over Mogira's drill there. So we'll bring the rotation up to maybe 80 or so. That looks all right. And so that'll carry over the same flicker animations though, which is fine. Okay, so now we're going to play around with lighting a little bit. So we're going to take the Mogira layer down here and duplicate that. And uh, just so we can have a cleaner looking timeline, we'll take all the beams and pre-compose them. So on this Mogira layer right here, we're going to create a mask around this part of Mogira right here, just his upper body area. And we'll bring that mask out a little bit. So we'll play around with the curves on this layer a little bit. We'll maybe bring the red channels up a little bit, maybe the green as well. All right, there we go. So we've got something that looks a little yellow now. So we'll feather that mask out quite a bit. We'll begin it when the beams start, obviously. And we'll keyframe the opacity at the very beginning and at the very end when Magir is done firing his beams. And we're gonna select both those keyframes and go to the wiggler and play around with the wiggle settings. So we'll set the frequency to maybe 23 per second and the magnitude at about 45 maybe. And that's just gonna flicker the opacity of this in and out of existence. And actually maybe we'll bring the magnitude up even more, like a lot. 254 maybe, let's see what that does. I think even more. 355. There we go. We're kind of getting something there. So now we have a little bit of light reflecting onto Mogira there. And maybe what we'll do also is we will add a tint effect to this bottom part of Mogira right here. And we'll uh, map white to black. And then we'll keyframe the amount of tint. We'll start it at zero. Uh, right here and then on this next frame we'll set it to about 26 maybe bring it all the way to the end keyframe it again at 27 next frame make it zero and we'll play around with these keyframes a little bit maybe just bring them forward a little bit so it sort of eases in and out of that state there maybe toward the end we'll play around with that a little bit just so it Flows out of that a little bit better. It's looking decent already. And we'll play around with the opacity of the sky too. So we'll press T for opacity, obviously. Keyframe that we'll at 100. Next frame, we'll bring 91 maybe. Maybe a little lower, maybe 88. Set a keyframe for that again at the very end, right about there. And then we'll have it ease back into normal sky. So now we've got a bit of lighting as Mogira is shooting off uh, the eye beams. So now we're going to finish off this effect. We'll pre-compose everything in the composition, we will attributes, and we'll add some camera shakes. So first of all we're going to add a motion tile effect to this composition. Uh, bring the output width and height to about 120 each. Check mirror edges. We'll keyframe the position and we'll set keyframes for before and after Mogira is done firing uh, her beam. There we go. So during these parts where there's nothing going on, we'll set the wiggle to maybe one and eight. There we go. And then when the beam's going off, we'll change that to about 21 and five. There we go. So now the camera shakes a little bit. And when the beam's firing off, the camera shakes a little bit more. Well, that finishes off this episode. Uh, just a little quick short one that uh, I'm taking care of right now. And I'm still working on getting to all of your guys' requests right now. Uh, rest assured, I'll try and get to most of them. Uh, most of the ones that I'm able to do. But uh, right now, busy trying to work on Zone Fighter stuff and uh, busy with college. So, yeah. Um, but don't worry. I'll keep making videos every week. And uh, until next time, uh, take care, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever it is that I have to offer.